Spooky. Playing the easy part. What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday with Ola 74 Hope you're having a great Sunday so far I mean, for me it's 8 a.m. in the morning Are people watching? No? The funny thing about the premiering happening every Sunday uh, at 8 o'clock Central European time The thing is that it's very late in the US of A where like 30% of my audience is But there's always this core set of people that get to the premiere every Sunday I just want to say, you guys fucking rock. I appreciate you guys, okay? Team no sleep, I see you guys. I was thinking like, shit, I don't have anything to sell this morning. <laughs> so let's just head on to the news, shit. All right, what has happened this past week, you might ask? Well, last week was a metal morning, so now, you know, we've been able to grind up quite a bit of news. So uh, we're just gonna head straight into it. Starting with Napalm Death, releasing a new single Do you know Napalm Death? One of the fucking legendaries of uh, Grind and Death Metal uh, They released a new single that is quite not what you would expect from Napalm Death It's very... very dark Much more industrial than Napalm Death are known for And uh, it's quite a heavy track, check this out It's gonna demonetize this video but f*** it man It's Napalm Death I think it's a very ballsy move of Napalm Death of doing this, but then again, I don't think they have anything to lose with this uh, It's quite a heavy song. It's definitely not, you know The regular Napalm Death style, but I mean What can you do after all these years? You have to evolve somehow You know, I think it's kind of cool right here. So I think there's a new album on the way There's a mini album on the way. Resentment Always Seismic uh, Out February 11th That was a couple days ago it's a mini album, go check it out, okay? Okay, I know you guys have been waiting for this, but Bring Me The Horizon and Ed Sheeran are working on music together. I know you guys have been waiting for this. I mean, look at this face. Isn't that a face any mother could not hate, you know? And Bring Me The Horizon, obviously, very legendary metal band. It seems that Bring Me The Horizon was one of Ed Sheeran's favorite bands and that it's been a dream come true for Ed to, you know, do something together with Bring Me The Horizon. I think this is very wholesome. You know? Oddly enough, that's the kind of music I grew up listening to and had Kerrang! subscription. I listened to it constantly. So there you go. Ed Sheeran is a metalhead. How about that? I was really into death metal as a kid. I listened to Cradle of Filth and Slipknot and all that stuff. I'm not saying I could ever step into that world, said Sheeran in a 2021 interview. I learned all those riffs on a guitar as a kid. That's something I never thought about doing, but something I would not be opposed to creating. So there we go. Exciting? I don't know. No? Well, it's in the news, so I figured you guys would be excited. I, I think about you guys, that's why I brought it up. No, that's, I, I guess it's kind of cool that they're working together. Let's just, you know, let's just hear it out, give it a chance when uh, it's finally out, okay? All right, so they released the song uh, the day after I made my son with Ola, and basically it's an Ed Sheeran song with uh, the sort of guitars. That's what it was. Look at this. Beautiful weather. Up with the dog. Have you guys ever heard about Offer and Punisher? No? Well, it's time. If you're a fan of industrial, you know, remember the, the, the first song we played there with Napalm Death? That was sort of as industrial, you know? Offer and Punisher has released a new single, uh, Incinerator, and this could be taken out of any Doom game, in my opinion. 
obviously the, the the main like cool guy that did this was Mick Gordon for Doom, but you know this is also good. I just wanted to lift this out there for you guys because it, it's a, it's a really cool video and it's a really cool song. Offer and punish for everyone. Okay, this has been in the news and uh, widely discussed online uh, that Psychwild discuss the possibility of Wild Audio producing the next line of Dimebag Daryl's signature guitars. So this has been quite the topic for the past week and a lot of people are obviously speculating. It, it's only that Psych Wild is open to uh, do the next Dimebag guitars. It's not that Wild Audio are gonna do it, but uh, he's open to discuss this with the Dimebag estate, which is Rita and uh, the guys. And you know, the Dimebag guitars are in quite a limbo right now where uh, you know, they, the, the Dime Estate sued Dean Guitars last year. No one knows what's gonna happen, if there's ever gonna be a new Dime Guitars or whatever. It's, it's an open book, basically. I have personally no idea. Some people are speculating that Solar Guitars will do them. We won't do them. Okay, I already made clear that. Uh, that's something I would probably not touch out of respect, you know, of Dimebag and the Dimebag Estate. I mean, Dimebag had no connection with me or Solar whatsoever, and so long after his death, it would be so fucking weird if he would go with any other brand than, you know, Dean Guitars or Washburn, in my opinion. You know, I will support anything that the Dime Bag Estate will, uh, you know, the decision they will make in the future. If they go with Wild Guitars, if they go with uh, creating their own brand or whatever they want to do, you know, I will support it, I will help out. You know, for me, I'm a fan of Dime Bag and Pantera. It's my obligation to keep the name Pantera and Dimebag alive because for me they're very important. They're a very important part of my music life. You know, I th that's my teenage years right there. Just you know, Pantera. That was the band. You know, so for me, I have to support and have to lift up the legacy of Dimebag and Vinnie Paul, obviously, and Pantera. Uh, I think it's important. I mean, who other than us can keep it alive? Okay. So, with whatever the Dimebag Estate decides, I will support it. Okay? Good little discussion right there. Okay, we have to demonetize this video a little bit, but Foo Fighters just released a thrashy death metal song and it rules. Okay, so uh, Foo Fighters are uh, currently making a, a movie, from what I understand, like a horror movie. The premise of this movie is that the band moves into a house to record something and then Dave has writer's block and then there's gonna be some demons and whatnot fucking shit happening in the movie. Anyways, Foo Fighters released a uh, death metal song, so we're gonna check it out. I haven't heard it, so this is the first time I'm gonna hear it. So, natural reaction in my face right now, okay? <laughs> yes. Dude, this is not death metal. Is it? Actually, catch you, man. <laughs> I mean, what would you expect? It's it's Dave Grohl, man. He's he's a metal he's a metal dude, you know. But somehow it still sounds like Foo Fighters, you know, the way the guitars work. And I don't know, just the change of chord, you know, change of the cording right there. Just it sounds old Foo Fighters. I feel somehow that this was made as a spoof. But it's still so good. People are probably gonna be, uh, you know, think that this was not sarcasm, but it feels sarcastic in a way. But it's still a good, good song, <laughs> good video. I, I quite enjoy that. Do I have high hopes for this horror movie? It, it might be fun. Uh, who knows? Anthrax Scott Ian and his son covered Sepultura's territory. Yes, this I want to watch. What is this? Is this the format of this video? That's so big. What? How old is his son? What the f Why is he so good on drums? Oh my god, look at the technique. What the f I wonder if you're the son of Scott Ian. If you're really like, you have such high pressure, you need to be good at an instrument. So, you know, you know, maybe this, this kid's life has been ruined because he has to practice drums all day. So Scott Ian can form his perfect metal band, his family band at one point. Dude, I, I'm actually fucking impressed. That sounded good. 
I mean, look at the foot technique, man. Holy shit. You know, sometimes I just wish my son wouldn't play Roblox all day. <laughs> you know, maybe he could become my new drummer. He'll get there, man. He's only 11 years old right now. I don't want to push my kids into doing anything, you know, music related, unless they really want to. If they show any kind of interest, I'll be there. Okay, and I'll help them. But, uh, you know, my parents didn't force me to do anything or, you know, force me to play, start playing guitar or anything like that. So, you know, I, I, I thought that worked. Eventually, when I was like 13 years old, I discovered guitar and uh, it became, uh, you know, a re real passion for me. So, uh, I don't want to force my kids into something like this. I don't want to push anything onto them. Who knows, man? Maybe when they are 13, they might get really passionate about, you know, bowling. I, I don't know, I'm just saying. I mean, that's, that's up for them to decide. Okay, Chris Adler names his top three metal albums of all time. Okay, Chris Adler, incredible drummer. Uh, what is he? Is he playing with anything right now? I mean, he was the drummer of Lamb of God. Then he recorded a Megadeth album, and then he was not the uh, drummer of Lamb of God. I don't think he's actually in any band right now. Okay, Megadeth Peace Sells is his number one album right there. Okay, okay. Peace Sells, but who's buying? From 1986, Meshuggah Destroy Race Improved from 1995. That's a great contender right there. And Queen's Rush, uh, Operation Mindcrime. Great prog metal album right there. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it shows that he was growing up during the 80s. Uh, Meshuggah is a timeless album. I mean, Destroy Race Improved. If you listen to it today, it's almost... How long? 30 years old almost soon. You know, in two years... Can I count? No, I can't. In three years, it will be 30 years old of an album. And you know what? It still sounds super modern. It was just way before its time when that album came out. So, uh, yeah, man. Fucking shit. Meshuga. And then my port knight names the only three 90s bands he thinks were doing metal at the time. Okay. I think the 80s were definitely the stronger decade of the two. I do not agree, but then again, uh, I'm not Mike Portnoy. Portnoy said he feels the 90s started to go downhill and names Pantera, Sepultura and Machine Head as the three then new bands that they were really doing metal. So then the other uh, metal bands weren't doing metal? I don't understand. But, you know, this is, these are the words of Mike Portnoy. I agree. Pantera, Sepultura, Machine Head were probably one, uh, the, the three bands that I listened to the absolute most to during the, like, mid-90s. So I don't disagree with the, uh, with the bands he picked here. But saying that, uh, you know, other things were not Mel. I don't know, man. Okay, so he's saying like the 80s, Metallica, Anthrax, Slayer, Overkill, Exodus, Megadeth. Okay, I understand what he's saying, but, you know, how about Death Mel, man? Did he even listen to, like, the 90s death metal? No? You know, sometimes I wish that bands and artists recognized, uh, you know, a, a band like Entombed more often, you know? Rest in peace, by the way, LG Petrov. Okay, Ingvar Malmsteen, Rig Rundown from the tour of 2011? Oh, is it, is it a re-upload? Hey, this is Rebecca Dirks with PremierGuitar.com. Rebecca Hi, Dirks, here. remember? Everyone had a crush on this girl. Right in front she of She was working for her Premier Guitar. And, uh, okay, so they're re-uploading, they're rehashing videos right now. So, uh, oh, okay, it's officially the mouse then. They're putting it on his channel. Okay, using, um, so they basically took the Premier okay. Guitar video it's a pretty recognizable and uh, uh, re-uploaded it. Okay. Is this the one where he has his stage, like... So, yeah, uh, the drummer and the bass player is crammed into the corner of the stage, and then there's like eight full stacks of marshals on the other end. Uh, dude, that's just that's I just love that. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, isn't that the best right there? That's how you're supposed to tour. Uh, I mean, you go to see Ingvar uh, Malmsted and an Ingvar Malmsted tour, you know. And the back one, not sound on the Do I have like eye problem, or is this video really gray? Like this. You know, th Scouts this is what it looks like when you become older and your eyes start to, you know, I don't know what's what it's called in English. It's star in Swedish. Uh, I hope uh, this is not me and that it's actually the video Wireless. that's green or gray. Uh, I play a special song for my, you know, in, in honor of my Ferraris, which I'm a complete Ferrari freak. And it's He's a playing a song in honor of his Ferraris. Red, you, know? you know, his, his Ferraris did a lot for Ingrid Malmsteen, so uh, that's very admirable that he's actually doing a song in honor of his Ferraris. I have so much respect for this dude. I, he was one of the, he's the neoclassical god man he, he was the one who made that shit happen and you know rising force and 
Ask Me Man, that album rocks. I listened so much to that album back in the day. He's, st he's still like in his legend status right here, that's what I like. I mean, this is uh, more than 10 years ago, but I've seen a fair bit of videos from him now and he, he looks fucking good and he's fucking... He, he's doing good, man. I'm so happy for him, Fucking Swedish bro. Alright, I know this is older piece of news, this is from the beginning of February, but Guthrie Govan showcases his new uh, Michael Jackson Sandimas uh, SD24CM. Uh, obviously, the Michael Jackson series of uh, uh, Guthrie Govan... Uh, uh, Alright, it's made in Japan, okay? Just so you guys don't get pissed off. Uh, it's not really Michael Jackson, but I'm, call it, but I'm gonna call it Michael Jackson from now on, okay? So he shows us his... Charvel, Michael Jackson, Sandimas, SD24CM. And you know what? He looks so f***ing cool with the white hair. He looks like a wizard now. And Guthrie is obviously one of the best guitar players in the world right now, in my opinion. I mean, he's, he's on a completely different level than the rest of us. And I feel like when he's sitting here talking about, you know, being one with the guitar, I, I can kind of, you know, that's what a lot of singer guitar players say about their guitar. You know, we made the perfect guitar for me, and you know, to, 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 to me to, you know, translate my head into songwriting with this uh, beautiful singer guitar. Uh, you know, sales mumbo jumbo. But I feel when Gif Guffrey is saying it, it feels a lot a lot more legit, <laughs> you know, for some reason. I just, you know, I really respect yeah. Guffrey and uh, what he's doing. He's just such an incredible musician. It, really well. That's it. He's not a guitar player in my my view. He's a musician. He's like a real musician. During the development of this model. Yeah, you know, so compared the to the rest of us. It's like you know, Guffrey is just like Steve I. You know, when Guffrey speaks, you better fucking listen. That's the exact same case with Steve I. When he speaks to you. You better fucking listen and pay attention. They have very important things to say and to, you know, a very important knowledge to share with the world. So I feel that Guthrie Gowen and Steve I, they're, you know, the same kind of aura surrounding them. I've actually met Guthrie and we shared a beer together in Norway. That was awesome. And he actually said that he was using one of my Kemper profiles when he was playing with Hans Zimmer, you know, for the, 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 uh, the big orchestral movie uh, shows that Hans Zimmer were doing across the world. He was using uh, one of my Kemper profiles for the Spider-Man theme. How f***ing cool is that? And that, my friends, was the news for today. Also, we need to talk about Sunday with Follow Rift Challenge. Tomorrow I will have a live stream uh, of the Swola Contender 73. It will happen in the afternoon. I'm going to stream at 3 o'clock Central European time. I don't want to uh, stream at the same time as Glenn. I did not know that Glenn was streaming on Monday, so I'm moving my uh, stream uh, one hour forward. I just don't want it to clash between Glenn's live stream and my live stream. So I I'm moving mine uh, one hour forward, uh, 3 p.m. Central European time. I'm gonna check out your contributions to the Sunday with Ola 73 at that point, okay? Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've had a great Sunday and I'll see you soon, okay? Thank you for watching. Goodbye.